Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. As we begin week 16, this day, June 8th, 2020. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Hopefully your microphones are working. If you want to say hello. Hello, teacher. Good morning. I can hear you. Good morning, hello? Omar. Oh, sorry. Good morning. Hello. Hello, welcome. teacher. Hello, good morning, Carol, good morning. Vanessa, Lisette, Elizabeth, Ali. Today, guys, what I'd like to do is since we're working, uh, we're going to be working one more week on our sonnet. And uh, I think many of you, if not all of you, have completed at least your first quad train. I want to take today uh, to give you the opportunity to recite the first quad train. And uh, I'd like to give you some feedback. I think it's important that we look at all of our work as we kind of compare what we have versus what uh, what our classmates have so we can compare, contrast, get some ideas about how others are also developing their sonnets. OK, so uh, today what I'd like to do is to go through and uh, listen to how you recite your first quad train. Again, we're just going to focus on the first quatrain. If you have more than the first already completed, uh, that's fine. But for today, we'll just focus on the first uh, first quatrain. If there's time, uh, we'll look into uh, the rest of your uh, poems. If for those of you who have finished more than the first uh, quatrain, so I'm going to begin with Vanessa's because I think she's having currently having some problems with her microphone. So we're going to look at that. I would like though that. Uh, that you, I'm going to share my screen and I'd like for you to look and compare again how I provide feedback to you and also your classmates. All right. So, one of the hardest things to do when writing a sonnet is iambic pentameter. Da 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 da. Remember that iambic pentameter, one thing is to recite it that way, but the other is to make sure that we respect the normal stress of the word. OK, so this is uh, this is, can be challenging. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's jump right into it. And hopefully now you can see my screen. And this is one way that I like to try to demonstrate stress, word stress, and if this helps you whenever you're developing your own lines, if you want to do the same, then I encourage you to do to do that. But uh, let's take a look at each of these five or four lines of the first quad train. All right. And what I've tried to do here is to put into capital letters the stress that uh, is going to follow iambic pentameter. So in addition to following iambic pentameter, then we also need to go back and look and see if we're stressing or if we're following the normal stress of the different words. All right. So especially, obviously, when they're uh, when the words are more than one syllable. All right. So let's take a look at the first line. Your friendship is the precious thing I have. So there's no problem with syllables. Your friendship is the precious thing I have. So no problems there. And we can quickly, uh, quickly glance and check the rhyme, and there's no issues there. So we have have and half, okay, and sighed and cried. Okay, so no problems with the rhyming scheme, A, B, A, B. No problems with the number of syllables, okay. But we also have to take it a step further now and look at Iambic pentameter. All right, so what I've done here is I have, I don't know if this is large enough for you to see. If you guys can't see it, uh, let me know. I can make it a little bit larger. But here I have your friendship is the precious thing I have. Now, this is not bad. I think the only suggestion I would make in this first line is stressing the word is 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 probably um, if if it were another verb, right? Probably it would be a little bit stronger, right? If there was another word that wasn't the verb to be, like stressing the verb to be 
usually is not a good, uh, good option if you can avoid it. And we also want to try not to, uh, to, to stress function words and even usually personal pronouns, right? And we'll look at some examples of that here in a minute. But overall, this line is not, is not bad. It's good. It's a good line. The only thing, again, if there's a way to avoid stressing is, right? But everything else, I think, works well because we're stressing pres precious. Precious is two syllables, strong, weak. That's fine. Uh, friendship, that's good. We're stressing friend, and then ship is weak or not stressed. And then thing, all right, that's precious thing I have. Now, a precious thing, if we look at words like thing, it's a precious thing. If there's another word that you can use instead of thing, right, then, and maybe even think figuratively, right? Maybe there's some, some sort of um, a better noun that you can come up with instead of thing, that would also, I think, be a way to improve the line. So uh, avoiding just words like nice and things and stuff, like the word stuff, which is kind of just general, general words that could mean a lot of different things. This might be an opportunity to bring in some sort of noun that, again, might be an example of uh, using figurative language. OK, so in this first line is and then the word thing, I would take a look at those. Second line, I'm nothing without you here by my side. Now let's take a look at the iambic pentameter. Number of syllables is OK, but let's look at where the stress falls. I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing without you here by my side. All right, so I'm forcing myself into stating it as iambic pentameter. But let's go back and look at the stresses. Nothing, okay, two syllables, strong, weak. With, is it without or without? Without. Two syllables, strong, weak or weak, strong? Without. I think it's weak, strong. So here, this is an example where we would need to rearrange the word slightly so that if we're going to use the word without, then we need to respect the weak, strong uh, stress that naturally comes with the word without. We would have to say without, right? So um, that would be, and then by your side. So I think the only thing I would say here is check this. Now this might mean that you have to rearrange slightly words that come before or after. If you want to continue using this word, maybe you find an alternative word, okay? But everything else, with not, with, I'm nothing. That's everything else is fine. Third line, you are you are part of me, or you are a part of me. I feel like there's an article that we need there, but you are part of. If I'm forcing iambic pentameter, you are part of me, like my other half. Yeah, it's like I feel like we're missing some opportunities to focus on part, you know, like R is not really that important. There's not a lot of meaning in that word. There's not a lot of meaning in the function word or the preposition of. And so I think it, the first part of the line is not quite as strong as the second part of the line where you're focusing more on like, that's better, and other, other, that's fine, and half, other half. Okay, so if you, you, this is a good example where the first half of the line isn't quite as strong, I think, as the second. And again, it's only because of the words that we're stressing. And I would also add that probably we need an article here. So, um, you know, sometimes, and just to give you guys an example here, sometimes you don't have to include all the, the, like the subject, right? So let's say that you want to begin this line. You are, you are a part of me. So you could easily ignore you are and start a part of me, right? A part of me and then continue that working that line and finish with, you know, the other half. See what I mean? Just by taking out you are because you, you said it in the prior sent a prior, uh, oh no, it's the same. No, but you don't have to say it. You're saying your friendship, I'm nothing and that's fine. But you, a lot of times you don't need the subject because it's implied, 
Okay, so think about that also when you guys are kind of uh, rearranging and removing and adding words. A lot of times you can remove the subjects. All right, the last line, after you come to my life, I just cried. Now, uh, after, how many syllables in after? After, after, strong, weak, or weak, strong? After, after, I think it's strong, weak, after. But we need to, we need to start weak, strong, right? So after, it's almost like after, no, it's after. So that's, uh, I would try to rearrange that. So after you came to me. So that changes kind of the, the rest of the words. Um, you do focus on came. That's, that's okay to stress that. But for example, here, my, you probably wouldn't want to stress my because normally we would say my life. Life is a super important word, right? It's a content word and you definitely want to stress life, right? And that's why it's going to be awkward to say it because you're you're forcing yourself to stress my 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 life my life no it's my life my life it's like da da my life right I just and I is okay and then I you know uh, stressing I is usually not the best option like because you might say for example I cried I cried. I cried, right? So weak, strong. A lot of times pronouns, especially personal pronouns or subject pronouns are oftentimes weak. Okay, so try to keep that in mind. All right, so I, I want you guys to see how I'm going through here and looking at each line, especially when it comes to iambic pentameter. Take a look at your own examples, right? And think about uh, some of the the lines that you have in terms of these word, these uh, syllable stresses, right? What's, what's stressed and what's not. All right. But you have a good start here, uh, uh, Vanessa, and you actually have completed the, uh, the uh, sonnet, right? So continue with the rest of what you have. Take a look at it and, uh, you know, let me know if you want me to look at something uh, specifically. But, uh, yeah, you've got a good start there. Okay. All right. Who else would like to first just recite it and and then we can take a look at it. And it doesn't matter if it's if it's perfect, just whatever you have, we can look at it. Who would like to go next? Me teacher. Okay, Ali. Yes. Um, you and I were so close and yet so far. You were unpredictable as water and I was flooding as the star. In his eyes, I found a loving slaughter. Right. In my lover, I found my home, my calm. Returns the roaring tiger to its cave as he healed my wounds with his patient ball. I knew his love would take it to the grave. But your indecision always hurts me. You want to fly without leaving your home. Darling, I will always make you love me. From your love, you have to give me some. I found myself in his pretty eyes. He's my reflection, my biggest prize. I found myself in his pretty eyes. All right. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to focus for now, uh, Ale, on the first quad train. And then... I Maybe just take a look, because I think some of your lines, you don't quite have 10 syllables. Um, like, I found myself in his, I found myself in his pretty eyes. I, I count nine syllables there. Um, but let, let's take a look at your first quatrain, and then I'd like for you to kind of apply what we talk about here today with the rest, and then we can take a look at the rest of your quatrain uh, later. Okay, so let me go into, oops, not that, comments. All right, so in the first, again, I'm going to do something similar to what I, uh, how I did uh, Vanessa's. And so if you, and I would encourage you to do this at least at first until you're really comfortable that you have uh, successfully completed the iambic pentameter for each of the lines of your sonnet. I would recommend doing something similar to, to what I'm doing here. And you have here, so you and 
I I even put I were so close yet so far, right? Okay, so I'm capitalizing what's stressed. In lower, upper and lower case, that's uh, what's not stressed. So here looks like we're stressing words like and and were at the beginning. You and I were. So, um, so I probably would not stress and since and is a function word. We want to focus more on content words that are like um, – uh, that are more uh, like uh, nouns and adjectives and adverbs, right? Words that have just hold more meaning, right, in the lexicon. Here we have were is okay, so close and yet so far. So notice here from here, so close and yet so far, right? That that works. Your second part of the line is stronger, I would say, than the than the first. All right, so I would try to keep from so far. So close and yet so far. And see if you can rearrange this here at the beginning. Now, I, there's nothing wrong with using repetition and especially using it within the same line. You certainly can use it from one line to the next as well. But if you're having some uh, issues here with part of the line and needing to change certain things, you don't need to necessarily change it. Whereas in this case, you and I, you've already mentioned you and I right? Already. So maybe you don't need to mention it again. Well, no, it's the same line. I'm sorry. I'm getting confused. Sorry. No. So yeah. So you've got, <laughs> so in the second line, you <laughs> were, sorry about that. You were unpredictable as, all right. So here, uh, same, same situation. You're focusing on were, you were, and maybe you don't need to repeat you were, right? Notice if you just started, uh, now, unpre unpredictable, unpredictable. Yeah, you know, when you get into larger words, it gets a little more difficult to to follow the iambic pentameter. But uh, you're, you might say we're un. You could even take out you. We're unpredictable. Yeah, I, I would suggest not using unpredictable only because it has so many syllables and you're trying to fit it into this flow of iambic pentameter, right? But in this example, you don't necessarily need to begin the second line with you were, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need to begin that. It's not always necessary because really the main thing here is what's coming after you were, right? That you were really is not even that important, again, because you've kind of already said it in the first line okay mm -hmm. so um and i and here here's the thing so and i and i was like and i was for me that's really literal what's more important is something about fleeting as a star right and i bet you can say more without saying you know uh you know, maybe not even using the word and mm -hmm. right take that out and maybe if you need, if you're trying to distinguish between you and the prior line and then I in the next line, maybe say I'm with a contraction like I am. I'm this or uh, I – and then you focus on some really key word, but not, a, not the verb to be. I – whatever, like a good adjective or a good verb or, you know uh, – some some other content word after the word I, but probably removing the connector and simply because you're you're again you're going to stress I and I, and usually I is not stressed in this case. Okay, in his eyes, like this in his eyes, just say his eyes, right? Because if you begin the line in in his, his is not important. Eyes mm. is important. That's that's huge, but but his is not is not stressed. His eyes, his eyes, his eyes. I found and learned that that's not now slaughter. How many syllables in slaughter? Slaughter, slaughter, two. Okay, strong, weak, or weak, strong. Slaughter, strong, weak. Right, and what do we need? A weak, strong. Right. <laughs> 
Right. Okay. So, so that's what I want you to check. You've got a really good start in your sign it. Take a look at each of the lines, just as we're doing here. If it helps to put in all caps, like the stress, right? Mm -hmm. And it then do try that, you know, whatever works for you. But notice how I'm trying to check two things. I'm checking the normal stress of the word, and I'm also checking which words I want to stress in my poem or which mm -hmm. words that you should try to stress. Again, content words versus function words. Function words are like articles, prepositions, even in most cases, personal pronouns, the verb to be. Those are not strong words. Those are not really words that have a whole lot of meaning, right? The words that we want to stress are those content words that are the nouns and the adjectives and the adverbs. Those are the words that really have hold a lot of a lot of meaning in in the, in any language really okay mm -hmm. all right so uh yeah good start ali and uh, take a look at that and then when you're ready uh let me know and we'll take a look at the rest of your uh, sign up but also make uh, sure that you have 10 syllables in each each line okay teacher i only have one question yes so do we have to end with a weak strong um word Yep, because okay. remember that remember that each line should follow iambic pentameter. So iambic pe pentameter, by definition, is mm -hmm. weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. Each line of a sonnet is going to follow that pattern. Weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. Mm -hmm. Next line. Weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. So the first two syllables and the last two syllables of each line are going to follow a weak, strong pattern or no stress and a stressed pattern. All right. So um, anytime you have a two syllable word that begins or ends a, a, a line of a sonnet, you know that it has to be weak, strong. All right. Got okay. it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ali. Next. Hi, teacher, please, can you check my sonnet? All right. Mm. Okay, uh, all right, I left some comments to your first quad train. Did you want me to look at another one? Or did you have questions about the first one? Yes, I changed was the second paragraph, but, uh, but I changed the first. So would you like for me to look at the second quatrain? No, only the first, please. Only the first. All right. All right. So now best friend. Mm, Mm, let's see, best friend. I feel like we need an article. My best friend, a best friend, the best friend. Uh, and and that doesn't. I'm, I don't remember what you had before, Lisette, but. Um, there's something about starting the term, the line best friend with no article that. I'm wondering if you can start with like a friend. I mean, even if you're thinking about a best friend, maybe you can explain through the poem or express what, in fact, you could even title the poem best friend without even saying best friend. You know what I mean? You can describe in the poem what a best friend is right who this person is if that's if that's what you're after and then maybe you just start a friend or my friend or right and then you you're following i think better the iambic pentameter and it it's um i think uh, a, a better way to start kind of grammatically speaking a friend together happy you and me mm -hmm. we're not 
Perfect. Okay, so perfect. How many syllables in perfect? Two. All right, strong, weak, or weak, strong? We strong. Perfect. 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 Mm -hmm. Strong, weak? Yeah, perfect. Like when uh, this is a difference between adjectives and nouns, right? When it's a verb, you can say he perfects, she perfects this, right? Something is being perfected, that's a verb. But here you're using it, I think, as a, an adjective. We're not perfect, right? We're, we're, that would be an adjective. So it's like the word record, record, right? When it's a verb, we record things. When we have like a big disc back in the day, we had those are records. Or we could have, you know, records, pa paper documents that are records. And it's a noun. Right? So um, here, if you're, if you're pronouncing it or stressing perfect, you're using it as a verb, and then it doesn't, it's grammatically incorrect. So does that make sense? Does that, does that make sense or, or no? Mm -hmm. No? Like, okay, so perfect. The word perfect can be pronounced perfect or perfect. Okay, so there's actually two different ways that you can pronounce this. When you pronounce the word perfect, perfect, weak, strong, it's a verb. All right, it's a verb. It's functioning as a verb. So you could say she perfects her sonnet every day by reviewing it. She's perfecting it, but it's a verb, right? You could say, we're not perfect. Now I'm changing the pronunciation. Perfect, perfect. No one's perfect. Have you heard that expression? Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes, right? No one's perfect, perfect. Now the word perfect, strong, weak is functioning as an adjective. It describes the subject. Okay. All right. So I would take a look at the word perfect here in this case, um, because I think you want it as an adjective. And then notice how you're, um, you're here in that, see, you're, you're not in that we are, all right, so now here you're focusing on in that we are agree. Now, when we say that we are, que estamos en de acuerdo, right? We say that we are in agreement or we agree. We agree. You and I agree with each other. We are in agreement, you could say, but we can't say we are agree. Mm -hmm. Right, so... There's a grammatical uh, problem there by saying we are agree. Okay, so I would take a look at that. And between, okay, what's the second word here, uh, Lisette? Between? Laugh. Laugh? Like laugh, ha, 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 ha? Mm hmm All right. All right, check your spelling. Okay, I oh. think we can lose the T. So laugh between, so between laugh and so laugh uh, is is a, a verb, right? We're laughing, ha ha ha. We're laughing. She laughed at me. I could say, right? So that's a verb. Laugh. What's the noun form of the verb laugh or to laugh? Now is um, strong weak. No, but what's the noun form of the verb to laugh? Like if, if the verb laugh is a verb, what's the noun form of the word laugh? You know? Laugh with F. 
No, it's laughter. Okay, wow. so it's laughter. So it would be basically what you have with ER at the end, laughter. All right, so between laughter, it would be like between laughter and pain. You could, that that would be the, the line. Now you need to go back and check to see if that's part of, uh, if that falls within the iambic pentameter. So be, between laughter, 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 strong, weak, laughter. So, uh, yeah, double check that. And, you know, notice here, pain is a, a content word. Make is a content word. Feel is a content word. All right, and free also. So th this line, you'd probably want to try to focus more on pain, like uh, stressing pain and stressing make for sure. Okay, instead of you and me, because you and me, those are really not, they don't hold a lot, a lot of meaning, really. All right, the, the meaningful words, right, are the nouns and the verbs, except for the verb to be. And so you could say, you make, you make me feel like that would be how you would want to say it. You make me feel. You make me feel that. All right. Um, last line. Direct, contend, direct, continue as ourselves. Direct, continue as ourselves can be. All right. Direct, continue as ourselves. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure about the last two words. Can be. Uh, I'm gr grammatically speaking. Okay. I would try to go back and review a little bit more some of the examples of figurative language, maybe even phrasal verbs. You know, maybe there's some good phrasal verbs that you can use. Even words like uh, or lines like alliteration, where you begin words or lines and begin with the same letter or some of the sounds. You can kind of repeat. You can even repeat some of your your words. Have one line where you repeat, you know, the same uh, word a couple of times, maybe two or three times. Okay, I think I. If you saw the example that I I provided last class, I think I had an example where I I, I repeated certain words in the same line. Okay, so I would try to bring in more examples of figurative language if you can. And uh, try to be careful with your overall grammar because we want to not only find these stresses, but we also want to communicate a message, a meaning, right? We don't want to lose the meaning uh, and, and we don't want grammar to interfere with, with the meaning or the message. All right, so take a look at that, uh, Lisa, and uh, let me know when you're ready for me to take a look at the next quatrain. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Next. Me teacher, please. Is this Caro? Yes. Okay, would you like to read your, your uh, quatrain? Yes. My love, my dear, you come and bring me life. Oh man, your touch is like a burning now. Again, I say, you feel in life so bright. You say you love me, right? I wonder how. Yeah, good. Um, Lisette, take a look. If you're, watch, if you're looking at the screen here, here's an example where she's repeating, my love, my dear, right? And this is really powerful, even though it's just repeating the same word. You don't want to do it in every line, but certainly you can you can use this for great effect by repeating this. You, my love, my dear, you come and bring me light. All right. So this is a good example of focusing on strong content words. My is not important, although she's repeating it. What's important here is love and dear and come and bring and light. These are all strong content words. Oh, Matt, your touch feels like fire burning now. So this is a good line, Caro. Uh, the only suggestion, and you're probably 
gonna, you're, you're, you're gonna know what I'm gonna say here. In fact, what am I gonna say? What do you think I'm gonna say? I'm sorry? But, but I stress like. It's, it's not so much that you stressed like, it's that you're not stressing fire. I feel like fire is r big here, right? I mean, for me, like fire. Like if I'm gonna say this, like fire. It's like, like fire. There's nothing wrong with stressing like if there's nothing else, if there's, an, if there's not another content word coming afterwards. But I feel like if you, you could strengthen this line, because it's a good line, this is a small detail, because the rest of it is, uh, is very good. But if there's a way that you can rearrange a little bit and keep fire somehow and stress it, I think you can improve this line, the second line. All right, uh, third line, again, I say you feel in life so bright. All right, so it, you're, you're stressing all the right words. Again, I say you feel in life so bright. You feel in life. Okay. And again, I say feel in life. All right. You feel in life so bright. All right. And then the fourth line, you say you love me right. Right. I went, all right. Yeah, I really like, I think my favorite line, I like the first line, but I think my favorite line is the fourth line. And I like how you have the question. And then I wonder why, wonder how, right? So you say you love me, right? You say you love me, right? So whenever you recite this, uh, Caro, you want to obviously, what you did, uh, make sure that it's clearly a question, pause, and then you can f finish out, I wonder why. Because that's going to be a really, me the, the meaningfulness of that line, uh, Caro, is going to be how you deliver it, how you say it, right? Because it looks great on paper, but it's going to depend on how you deliver it. So bring out that question with your intonation. You say you love me, right? I wonder how, something like that. But you want those pauses. You want that question really clear based on your intonation, your highs and lows, and, um, and then deliver the rest of those three words. I wonder how. Okay? But, yeah, this is good. The, the only thing I would suggest here is the, uh, the fire. If there's a way that you can bring back a fire to focus on that word. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. Any questions? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Caro. All right, next. Uh, me, please. All right, Omar. Okay, would you like to read it? Uh, yes. <clears throat> as black as night, as bright as light is, unlikely. Fairy tales took the trouble to stain your image, bringing up a quiz. Now, how to solve this hard so puzzle? Uh, I missed the question mark at the end. Okay. As black as night, as bright as light. How many syllables do you have in the first line? Ten. Isn't it? As black as night, as bright as light is. I count nine. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing one. All right, let's take a look at the second uh, line. Unlucky fairy tales to the trouble. How many syllables in trouble? Um, Two. Strong weak or weak strong? Oh, strong weak. And what do we need? Oh, yeah, I thought it was a weak strong. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. To strain your image, bringing up a quiz. Okay, so iambic pentameter in the third line, you've got 10 syllables, and you're stressing the right words. To strain your image, bringing up a quiz. Now, so iambic pentameter, good. Um, you may have to, I don't know how you're going to end up f completing the first line. All right. Mm -hmm. But, um, my, my suggestion in the third line to, to stain your image, bring it, 
I, 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 I'm trying to understand the message here that you're, you're getting. And here's the thing. It doesn't mean that I need to get, have the same meaning that you're even thinking. Okay. But I, I, I'm reading it objectively, trying to, to see if I'm getting something, right? If I'm getting some kind of message from your creative text, okay? So, uh, as night, as black as night, as bright as light is, all right? So, you have two totally contrasting ideas in the first line. Something black as night, so I'm thinking something bad or negative. And then, as bright as light... I feel like you're going completely the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And because you put that in the same line, I feel like I lose something like black as night. Okay, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to read on. So the next line, unlucky fairy tales took the trouble. Um, and the, fairy in that one, at the beginning, in the word unlucky, I missed an L. I wanted to say unluckily. Oh, unluckily. Mm-hmm. Oof, okay, Unluck, unluckily, that's four syllables. Unluckily, fairy. If if it's unluckily, then you're not stressing fairy. Uh, no, right. <laughs> yeah, unluckily, fairy, fairy. Fairy tales took... So I'm trying to understand what you mean by fairy tales took the trouble. Yeah, um... Black as night, fairy tales took the trouble. They took the trouble. Fairy tales, so these stories took the trouble to stain your image. So these stories are making someone look bad, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, but then bringing up a quiz, I don't, I don't know what that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, Maybe I'm, I really that's I'm really uh, struggling a little bit to see exactly what the message is, and I want to get the message, right? And I want mm -hmm. you to think about what the, what is the message that you want to send here. And I feel like as bright as the light is a little bit off compared to the rest that tend to be kind of negative. It sounds like it's kind of negative. Now, how to solve this hard jigsaw puzzle. Okay, uh, to, to solve a jigsaw puzzle, I get. So to solve a problem, to solve some sort of, right? So that has some kind of meaning. But I the first three lines don't quite, for me, don't I'm not getting the message. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about it. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll ask students to explain, right? Because maybe I don't get it. If you explain to me, then I might get it. If you can explain literally what you're trying to say, right? Sometimes... That'll help me understand what you're trying to say and also help you in coming up with maybe some other ideas that are a little bit more explicit. Mm -hmm. okay, you don't have to be really explicit, right? I mean, you want to use figurative language. But, you know, the when you're using literal language and then you're also kind of talking um, around or beating around the bush, as we say, or, uh, you know, you're not speaking really directly to what it is you're trying to say, then it's very easily can be un misunderstood or there can be some confusion into what 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 it is you're trying to say. So um, I want you to, you have to kind of do two things at once. You have to follow the structure, iambic pentameter and the rhyming scheme, but also you need to be able to, uh, you know, articulate some sort of meaning or, or emotion. And uh, I would take that into consideration trouble and puzzle yeah the the words are rhyming okay but again if you take a look at the first line you may have to change something there depending on um you know and and ending with the verb to be like the light is i i think the only way that that would work is if if the next line was a continuation of the verb is mm -hmm. like it like if you put like an ellipsis, dot, 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 after is, and then the next line, you continue the sentence. That would be the mm -hmm. only, I, th I would, would, the only reason I would end the word, I think, with the verb to be. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, thank any, you. Any questions, Omar? Uh, no, I will change it, and then, and then I'll see if it's better. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you.
Next. Anybody else want me to look at uh, something? And if your mics aren't working, uh, I'm not looking in the chat, but let me jump back here in the chat. Has anybody left a message in the chat? All right, if someone is not able to activate the mic and wants me to look at something, type it in in the chat and I'll give it a look. Okay, I think we looked at, I'm looking here at the list, the attendance. Uh, Elizabeth, did you want me to look at something? If you wanted me to, uh, if you want to want me to look at something, just post something in the chat if your microphone's not working. In fact, I think I, we looked at yours last class, but if you have any questions, let me know. Um, what I'd like to, okay. I think we looked at it, Elizabeth, unless you have a question or you want me to look at it again, we can certainly do that. Or if you're still working on your second. Okay, no problem. All right, guys, I think then uh, I'm looking here. I don't think there's anyone else here in uh, today's class uh, for, for me to look at something. So. Uh, tomorrow, uh, what I'd like to do is continue doing the same. If you guys can crank out another quad train, we can look at your second quad train um, and or the first, if we still need to look at the first. Uh, the thing is, I, I want to give you feedback little by little, just like what we're doing here today, so that you can make adjustments as you go through the, uh, the, the sonnet. In some of your cases, you've completed the whole sonnet, which is fine. We can take a look at the, the next quad train. But I really want you to also have practice throughout this week uh, to recite your uh, your quad trains. Whenever we're developing the quad train, I recommend to students to think about iambic pentameter and even stress or overstress. Da 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 da. But when you read your final poem, right? When you're practicing today and and throughout this week, and when you do your final poetry reading on this Friday. You're not going to need to overstress da 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 da. That's not how you need to need to read. It's going to be dependent very much on the words themselves. So you're going to have a lot of liberty in how you deliver each of your lines. Uh, taking uh, Kato's example, where she had a question and then she final uh, she had three words to finalize in the next sentence. You know that's an example where. She's not going to follow da 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 da. She's she's going to develop that question with proper intonation, pause, and then deliver the last three words of the sentence for the next the, the next sentence within the same line, All right? So, if you're using alliteration, my my dear, my love, da 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 da, you're going to have those pauses, right? Overemphasize the pauses not only between each line but within each line, right? And use commas to help remind you where you need to include those pauses whenever you read your poem. All right, guys, are there any questions at this point in developing your sonnet? Um, Peter, so for tomorrow, do we have to have another quantry? Well, I would uh, suggest that you try to, yes, complete a second quad train. Yeah, so that we can look at that. We'll do kind of what we did today. Uh, I want to try to give preference to those that I have not looked at anything so that I'm getting, reaching everybody, that everyone's getting uh, feedback. But yes, try to uh, produce a quad train or focus on a quad train each day, right? If you focus on one, you know, today's Monday, tomorrow, you've finished the second, Wednesday, the third, right? Maybe the, the couplet, then Thursday, you're finished with the whole thing. We look at it again. And you're getting feedback each day or, or maybe every other day. 
or maybe even outside of class, because although we're doing this in class, of course, when you guys finish a quiet train and you want me to look at something outside of class, you can send me a, a message in chat, which some of you are doing. So between what we're doing in our live sessions versus feedback that you can receive outside of class, I would try to each day complete a, um, a quad train so that you're not rushed to complete it at the end where uh, this Friday we're going to basically we'll need almost the entire class to read all of the poems, right? So remember that this Friday is going to be our final poetry reading. We're going to read all of our poems. So we're, I want to dedicate pretty much the entire live session to reading each of the four poems that we've developed for this unit. Okay, next week we're going to work on uh, the e-portfolio. We'll talk about that later. Um, but this is what we want to focus on this week. And on Wednesday, we're going to have our final figurative language review. All right, so we'll have class time on Wednesday to do that. So we'll have basically tomorrow, Tuesday, and then Thursday also to basically do what we did today, look at each of your poems, practice reading it, and giving you feedback on rhyming, iambic pentameter, and structure. Okay, don't forget also the beginning of the third quatrain, we need to include a volta or a turn or a twist, right? So some slight change in how you're praising the person or the object uh, of, your, of your sonnet. Okay, so don't forget that if you're already into the, the third quatrain. I would use the connector butts. I think that's a good option. You don't have to. There are other options, but certainly you can think in terms of some sort of connector, some contrasting connector to contrast what you said in the first two quatrains. And make sure that the first, I would say the first two quatrains pretty much need to be in line of what you're saying, right? We don't want the twist to happen before the third quatrain. And so also keep that in mind. The first two are going to be very much in line with how you're praising or showing appreciation to this person, this thing, this object, or something related to nature. And so you might want to keep that in mind as well. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there for today. And uh, we'll pick up uh, our review of our sonnets tomorrow morning. Okay, thanks, guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye. See you. Be sure.